quest to eliminate malaria from the planet is on track, according to research reported here at the conference in Philadelphia. The uneven distribution of the disease is a barrier to elimination that will hopefully be overcome by projects such as the one in Mwanza, Tanzania. We were looking at malaria hotspots in northern Tanzania, Misungu district, Mwanza, and we, we selected uh, 13 villages. All the households in these villages, we carried out passive surveillance and we tested everybody in the Basin survey, we tested everybody using serology and PCR, and we were able to identify hotspots. In any area with malaria, whether it's a high endemic area or a low endemic area, there are households that have a lot of malaria. There are hotspots of malaria transmission. Those households you can detect by looking at serological profiles, by looking at antibodies against malaria in the, in the blood samples of these, these household members. And by that, you can find the households that you would like to target for malaria elimination. In the Tanzanian project, information about hotspots is making it possible to target malaria treatment and mosquito control. These hotspots included households which were small in numbers. They are not a lot. It was a small area which were responsible for transmission. And there are houses which were far from the health facilities. They were of poor socioeconomic status compared to the surrounding. The houses were much larger, more than 11 people per household. And they were less using bed nets and other control vector measures. Hotspots are present everywhere and they will form the stumbling block for malaria elimination efforts unless you can find them. And if you can find them, you can make your malaria control efforts, your malaria elimination efforts a lot more uh, efficient. So we can target these hotspots during a uh, dry season and direct our control measures to this. And we can, by doing so, we will be able to eliminate malaria. The conference here in America has been hearing about cheap diagnostic test kits that you can use to detect malaria without having to look at a blood sample down a microscope. Rapid diagnostic tests are easier to use, uh, they, you don't need that much training, um, they are quick, you know, within 20 minutes and they're reasonably cheap, so less than a dollar. So uh, I think they are easier to use well than microscopy. Delegates at the Tropical Medicine Conference have been hearing that with malaria in decline in many countries, it becomes ever harder to find the infected persons who are still transmitting the disease, especially as many of these are asymptomatic. So the scientists need to calculate where they are and then go out and test. We're working on asymptomatic malaria in an area in rural Zambia and we're trying to find ways that we can easily target asymptomatic reservoirs that are responsible for some transmission um, to eliminate them and then uh, get us a step closer to actually eliminating malaria. So we're using symptomatic cases as indicators and using rapid diagnostic tests and some molecular methods using PCR that are able to tell us that we are finding people that are actually carrying the parasite and so we can target them and treat them to eliminate. And we're also finding that people that are live close to rivers also may be a reservoir and then if you're further away this targeted method actually works at finding um, asymptomatic reservoirs of malaria. So it looks like it's going to work and um, we still have to do more studies of course but um, yeah, we look, it may be possible to use this as a practical technique to eliminate malaria. In Cambodia the decline of malaria is under threat because the parasite is getting resistant to even the most modern drugs. So very high standards of surveillance are vital. We've been introducing new technology at the, at the local level within Cambodia particularly based on mobile phones, um, to pilot new ways of getting malaria surveillance data from peripheral levels to the center in a much more timely and specific way. Uh, this is, we found this to be a huge improvement on uh, standard malaria surveillance approaches. And we found that now basically the malaria control program in Cambodia uh, has data in a very timely and specific way on clusters of cases within villages at the periphery, um, which allows them to respond in a much more uh, timely and reactive way uh, to these emerging clusters. With millions of people needing treatment, we've been hearing, malaria drug safety is of paramount importance. Well, this morning we've been talking about ways of evaluating the safety of anti-malarial drugs. 
you know, all drugs have adverse effects. And what we have to try to do is to come up with a systematic approach to identifying where the risks lie. So what's happened this morning is we brought together three different research initiatives plus the World Health Organization to discuss the different approaches to generating safety data uh, for anti-malarials, primarily in Africa. Um, we looked at how to evaluate safety uh, in pregnancy. It's very important to make sure that any drug that's taken in pregnancy is safe for the mother and for the unborn child. But it's also important to know that in real life, day-to-day -day settings, uh, the malaria treatments that are being used are safe. So far we have uh, no cause for concern. We're tremendously encouraged that there is more interest in generating safety information uh, and we're also reassured that the benefits of treatment far outweigh the risks. Because government medical services are thin on the ground in many places, scientists have been using unconventional methods to find out if patients are receiving the right drugs in the correct doses from private medical practitioners. I've presented um, results on a study we're doing in Cambodia um, in the private sector using actors to find out um, what treatment they get when they present with symptoms of malaria. Um, and what we're finding is that patients get these little packets, cocktail packets, um, of four, five, maybe up to nine different colourful tablets, which can be antibiotics, antimalarials, even steroids. And so we're uh, analysing these uh, packets to find out what they really contain. There is a danger that they contain nothing, there's a danger that they contain dangerous drugs, and there's a danger they contain multiple different types of the same drug so that people are getting overdoses. How long it will take to eliminate malaria, nobody here in Philadelphia was prepared to say, but the disease is declining and hopes are high.